Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Technique Tuesday. This week, we're gonna be looking at how to train the neck through a variety of different training techniques while avoiding injury and maximizing strength and size of the neck musculature. But before we get into the training technique itself, let's have a quick look at why neck training is so important in the first place. For me, I would say the first reason is aesthetics. In my experience, it's usually photos like these that turn people onto neck training. There's literally nothing different about the two images here except for the width of the neck and you can clearly see that the guy looks so much more facially attractive on the right and the same thing goes for celebrities who've had their necks photoshopped smaller i mean you can see just how much nerdier almost goofier channing tatum looks with his neck shrunk in on the right and this is what actor dj qualls actually looks like and here's what he'd look like if he trained his neck. Now, of course, I've had about a two inch neck transformation myself after just one year of consistent neck training. Now, luckily, one thing many people do find is that once they actually start training their neck, it grows pretty fast. And I would say that's probably because it isn't a muscle that is gonna get a lot of external loading and just regular day-to-day -day activities. So once you actually do start hitting it properly, it should actually grow pretty fast. And I think it's also important to hit the neck from an overall strength and athletic perspective. And my opinion, every athlete involved in contact sports can benefit from neck training because the neck stabilizes the head. So strengthening it can improve performance, prevent concussions and injury. So football and hockey players, boxers and MMA fighters all can benefit from direct neck training. And it's actually pretty common to see these athletes include direct neck training in their strength and conditioning programs. Now I've also noticed as have many others that neck strengthening can reduce day-to-day -day neck pain and headaches as well. Okay, so we're gonna start by hitting the front of the neck through forward flexion, which is gonna be handled mainly by the sternocleidomastoid muscle, but it's also important to develop the back of the neck, which we'll be training through neck extension. And we can also train the neck through lateral flexion. However, since lateral flexion is mostly handled by the sternocleidomastoid as well, I wouldn't say it's a top priority for increasing neck width, but definitely can help ensure proportional growth. Also rotation or anti-rotation of the head is important for certain athletes like MMA fighters or NASCAR drivers. And I like to use rotation exercises to sort of pre-activate the entire neck warm things up and establish a mind-muscle connection. So before doing any direct neck training, I think it's important to do a quick one to two minute dynamic warm up so you don't pull a muscle or get a zinger the next day, which is basically a really, really stiff neck to the point that you can't turn your head one direction, which can take a few days to go away. So before anything, I'll start with eight to 10 head rotations, alternating directions so I don't get too dizzy. And then I'll lie down on the bench and do 10 to 12 slow tempo body weight neck curls and flip to the side, do another 10 to 12 lateral curls with head weight, and then do the same for the rear. And this phase is actually really important because you're focusing on taking your neck through a full range of motion, getting a comfortable stretch at the bottom, and then trying to touch your chin to your chest at the top. And you'll feel a really strong neck contraction and mind-muscle connection doing this. After that, I'll do a few five-second stretches side to side, and then do my last warm-up drill, which basically adds head rotation to the mix. So here you wanna do a neck curl as normal, except you're gonna to try to touch your chin to your shoulder rather than your upper chest and then alternate sides from rep to rep. And finally, I'll finish out the prehab stuff with a few side-to-side -side rotations with an isometric hold. I seriously love this drill, and if you don't have anything to load, you can actually get a crazy neck pump and burn just by doing this on its own. So if you do all of this in a straight sequence, you should be able to complete the full warm-up in just a couple minutes, and now you'll be ready to train much more safely and effectively. Okay, so up first is the basic neck curl. Now there are a few ways you can set this up. Now, the simplest way is just to hold Hold a plate to your forehead, position your shoulders at the back edge of the bench, and curl your neck down and up. You'll definitely want to use some kind of protective headgear for this. I find a nice and thick toque is good, or you could just use a towel. And I'm just now realizing that this might make for some pretty cool merch, uh, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. Now you wanna make sure that your neck is actually doing the work here, not your arms or your abs. So I find taking a looser grip on the plate or even actively pressing down, sort of mashing the plate into your forehead prevents you from cheating with your arms. Also, once your neck starts to fatigue, your abs may try to get involved by crunching the weight up and down, 
So you wanna curl your legs in under the bench to lock things in and really make sure that the only movement is happening at the neck. Now, as far as loading goes, I'd recommend loading in a more moderate to light rep range for neck work, uh, generally in the 10 to 20 rep zone or even as high as 30 reps, since you don't wanna risk compromising any of the spine's supporting tissues or soft tissues just to go heavier. And as long as you're training relatively close to failure, you can get the same results with higher reps and with less of an injury risk. Still, I think many people do underestimate their strength potential on neck curls. I've personally done 45 pounds for a PR set of 25 or 30 pretty strict reps. But that actually pales in comparison to some guys with really strong necks. Uh, for example, here you can see Alex from the channel Alpha Destiny doing 90 pounds for many reps. And while I wouldn't necessarily recommend loading that heavy for most people, if you find yourself still stuck at the five or 10 pound plate after training for a while, it may be time to start setting your strength standard a little higher. So up next is neck extension. And again, the simplest way to load this is by placing a plate on the back of your head and doing lying neck curls. And while this can work, I don't really use this exercise anymore myself for a few reasons. I find it a bit harder to maintain balance on the bench in the chest down position, especially once you start loading a bit heavier. And because your neck is much stronger in extension, a single 45 pound plate actually won't be heavy enough even for 20 plus reps once you get decently strong on these. So this is where training gear becomes pretty much essential. So I'd strongly recommend investing in some sort of head harness so you can load extension much more effectively and comfortably. Now, many of you guys will know that for the last four or five months, I've been using the neck flex, which I find incredible for this. Now, basically you can use it to train extension extension, but also forward flexion and lateral flexion, which is unlike any other head harness that I've used and I've used a nice few, and many of them make forward flexion pretty much impossible to load. So you can load this with band resistance as well, and it also comes with a door anchor, so you can very easily set this up at home, which I actually do most of the time now if I just wanna squeeze in a quick 10-minute neck workout without any real setup or risk of getting stared at at the gym, even though I don't personally think there's anything to be ashamed of there. Uh, but anyway, you can get a complete and full neck workout in using just this one piece of gear, especially if you use the chain included to load some weight for extensions, which you can do on a cable rack or with a plate. So I wouldn't say that the neck flex is required to make neck gains, but it definitely makes it a lot more convenient and totally saves you the trouble and potential embarrassment of having to put a plate on your face and you can easily train your neck from home if you don't wanna do it in the gym. And NeckFlex was kind enough to hook the channel up with an affiliate link. So if you guys wanna grab one and take your neck training up a notch, you can support me and my channel in the process. So again, with neck extension in general, whether you're doing it on the bench with a plate on your head or with a head harness, you wanna take the neck through a full range of motion getting a full stretch at the bottom and then lifting your head up till you reach a neutral head position at the top. And I'd be careful not to hyperextend the neck at the top. So just stop and reverse the movement once you get to that neutral head position. And you can also include neck bridges in your training program. However, I personally think they're a bit redundant if you're already doing all the other stuff we've talked about. But with that said, I know many wrestlers and combat athletes really benefit from these movements and I will include them in my own training from time to time. So if you guys would like to see me cover neck bridges uh, that's something I can do in a future video. So guys, that is all that I have for this one. Uh, don't forget to check out the link in the description to the neck flex. Uh, like I said, it's something I've been using for a while now, and I thought this would be the perfect way to bring more attention to it uh, because I really do think it's a great piece of equipment. So shout out to them for being the first and only Technique Tuesday sponsor. Uh, like I said, it's not mandatory for progress, but I definitely think it helps. Also, if you haven't seen my neck and trap science explained video, I definitely recommend giving that a watch as I dive into more of the research behind neck training over there. Uh, please leave the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys all here next Tuesday.